It's going to be one long, gruelling day of high performance, intense battles, extraordinary teamwork, occasional errors and magical driving skills. Brace yourself for another great race, Australia. It is showtime. And a great start by Jamie Wincup, who sweeps to the lead from Russell on the way up Mountain Straight and some trouble back at the start. I couldn't pick who it was now, but there was almost a stalled car. The yellow flags actually come out on pick straight there. Couldn't pick who it was. We will find out what that drama was in the background. But what a great start by Jamie Winkup. He got far enough in the lead to turn across in front of David Russell and commands track position immediately. Gets to dictate the pace. He's got fresh air on the run on cold tyres up to the cutting for the very first time. We don't know their fuel loads, but we do know that they'll be heavy and they'll be lazy to drive in these first couple of laps. We've got Winkup, Russell, Golding, Waters, Tander, Stanaway, Delberto, Holdsworth, Luff and Payne. That is the top 10 as they make their run across the top of the first time for 161 laps. At the back of the pack there, car number 98. View from the Century Batteries chopper cam over the top of the hill for the first time, Wind Cup. No Desperado moves in the opening lap. They will already now begin to get a sense of what have I got? What's this thing starting to feel like? Does it feel secure under brakes? Can I lean on those tyres? And if so, how much? Exit Forest Elbow now for the first time and sizing up Conrad Strait where they'll build to just on 300 kilometres an hour. This is approaching 80 plus metres per second at the bottom. And there's next to no breeze out there at the moment. They will be making the pace. Some of those primary drivers, there's 16 co-drivers. There's 12 of the primary drivers on board. And some of those primary drivers have already captured the first lap and done a great job. Wind Cup covers, Russell to the outside. James Golding lurking in third, just in case there's a fumble up front. And once again, Russell has a look down the inside to see whether or not he can show the nose. He's also covering because he's under pressure from Golding. James has done a great job to start. Big lock up in the background. I'm not sure whether it was the Penrite car off Tanda or whether in fact it was Waters, but there was a significant lock up in the background. This is going to be interesting. It's very fast. That's a move into seventh position now for Will Brown. Up 10 spots, qualified in 17th. Things went awry in qualifying for him, but he's making ground. So Jonathan Webb was able to put a little move on Craig. It's an unusual spot. Actually, it looks like the car's slowing. Definitely oh, slowing. So there's a problem there for Craig Lowndes. So he's trying to feed into gear to get back to second at the end of Mountain Straight. And obviously it's floating around beneath his hands. Probably going to make enough ground to be able to get down the inside here. And he does nicely. And Cam also participates. He didn't try to block him. He knew he was coming. Dean has a look down the inside here. Locks up late in the game. Tags the left rear corner of Simona Di Silvestro's car. She's now pointing in the wrong direction. Down in 15th position. Here's the onboard view from the Midi's electrical entry. Right here, it's turning sour. And just tags it in the left rear corner. Yep. So, I'll be having a look at that from a judicial perspective to see whether he was up far enough, get a couple of different angles and work out whether there's some sort of penalty or not. Anyway, we'll get on with that one. Oh, big, Ooh. big, big lock-up. And uh, that was awkward for car number 19. He's and he's actually given it a whack. Is he going to be able to get out the other side? That's a no. Kevin Estre's made a big mistake down there in turn one. First safety car of the day. Standing by now for a restart after our first safety car. 29 of 161, a long, long way to go. Warmer conditions out there at the moment and a re-energised race as everybody's now done their first stop. Varying fuel loads out there at the moment. Fresh tyres all round, and we go back into it one more time. O'Keefe from Van Gisbergen. He'll be quick. Didn't quite put a huge amount of fuel on that car. Then Reynolds, and then Feeney, then Moffat. Brody Kostecki, keep an eye on him as well down in sixth. Here we go. 
Mountain Straight on the restart, blazes up on the inside, and that puts the reigning Bathurst champion into a position of authority immediately. Uh, Running with him is Reynolds. And O'Keefe got caught there. He was out on the dirty stuff and he couldn't get the turn back across. So Di Pasquale now up to sixth, down the inside. That, oh, in the fence. That was disastrous. I think they bumped. As the move was put on by Scott Pye, I think you'll find that the two cars ended up like wheel to wheel, and that's Dale Wood. 121 laps of 161 remaining. Mark Winterbottom, seasoned professional at the helm of the field from Fabian Coulthard, who's also got a vast amount of experience. And then it's a youngster in third spot in Declan Fraser. He's in that tradie entry, new livery this weekend. Brody Kostecki, the championship leader. He's in fourth position, and they've used some clever strategy to put themselves into that position from Stanaway. And this battle that's been raging throughout the championship between Triple Eight and Erebus is going to continue today. So here's the change for the lead that I spoke about before. And down the inside. Nice job. Brody Kostecki was able to well and truly clear Mark Winterbottom. He tried to make a little race of it early, but in the end just made it fairly easier when they got down to the turning point of the final corner. In comes Brody Kostecki, followed by Hello, second boys. place. Right Richie yeah. Stanaway. Driver change. Brody gets out. Right, right, 98 laps remain. And driver change as David Russell gets in. Brody Kostecki gets out. Meantime, right behind. We've got Richie Stanaway. They're doing a brake change on that car. Nice shiny tyres in the background there, ready to go on. Brake rotor on. Brake caliper fitted. They're doing the dry brake coupling. Ready. Good comms. Good comms. And the traffic just happens to be car number 99. So it was a yes or no knife edge decision there. Do you want to do it or not? You want to change the fueling policy in order to have track position? And the answer was yes. We just spoke about track position a second ago before those stops were completed. And that's how powerful track position is. Oh, Whoa. no, more Let's trouble now for this car. So we've got smoke and evidence of flames there just a moment ago at the bottom of Conrod Strait. That looks pretty significant, doesn't it? And in the car is Dale Wood, Brad Jones, Andre Heimgartner. Richie, there's a car with smoke that just came out Conrod, so just watch it. Just possible oil. I don't know what kind of smoke it is. So they don't want to block the lane. Engine's off. And uh, he's going to pull right up there next to the fire marshal, just in case. I don't think he can. It's over and out. Oh my God, this is such a cruel game, I must say it sometimes. But on days like this for Brad Jones Racing, you have to feel for all the men and women in that racing team. Has it left anything on the racetrack up there as well? But oh, we've got trouble at the top of the hill here. Unfortunately, it's an issue for James Moffat, and that's damage on that car. Now, is that as a result of anything that was on the road up there? He's whacked the wall just beyond the dipper, and the safety car's been called as he tries to drag it down the hill. So this is another complexion changer for this race. So Moffat's going to drag this thing against the damage in the right front corner, and the damage is significant. So look into the background, and he's made heavy contact out the other side of the dipper. And is that as a result of any lack of grip on the road, or has he just made a mistake? This will tell us. Let's have a listen. Hit the inside fence, I think. Wow, heavy contact. And this just goes to show how risky this place is. The slightest hiccup in your rhythm, and you eat concrete. David Russell has done 36 of the 54 laps required for driver B. 
If you look, for example, at car number 88, and driver B in this case is Jamie Winkup. He's now done 61 laps as we get back into it as well. Simona Di Silvestro also nominated as a primary in 14th at the moment. Matt Payne in the claw back. Oh, 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 dirty side of the road. Oh, How did she safe. manage to get away with that one? Oh. That was full-blown WRC spec, wasn't it, to try? And she's been doing some rallying as well. Well, that served her well. <laughs> Winkup having a bit of a sniff around the back of Tander's car and he's right on him. He's putting his signature on the rear bumper and Garth's just suggesting that he goes the long way. Remembering that Tander was in this team for the last several years. And now he finds himself in hand-to-hand -hand combat with his former boss. And there was nothing in that then. They were close to bumping. Critical stop here. David Russell's done an outstanding job in that stint. He should be applauded for that mistake free and fast. This is now Brody into the end. Tander's the leader. We're riding with Brody. He's third. Keep an eye on the 99. So we've got this intriguing battle unfolding here between these guys as they march on up mountain straight and this is going to continue oh problem for the red bull car what's going on a white flag a slow red bull car it's a drama for feeney it's a drama for feeney at a critical phase of the race and this is a gigantic game changer i'm so sorry about this brother we're going to try and get you back out so we'll get you into the garage We'll, uh, just Multiple messages please. coming to us that it's so we'll just wait for some facts to be established. Yeah, Jamie Woodcup, I just asked them what the issue is. They have gone inside the car, it's gearbox. Is it not actuation again, the same as the 888 car? He just told me it was gearbox, so driver's gone or unable to change gear in the 88 Feeney car. 22.2 seconds is the margin as he heads into turn one for the final time. Sister car in the foreground. A bit of dust being brought up from somebody having run wide down there on the exit of turn number one. And they've done a superb job again, Neil. Richie Stanaway has contributed so much through the course of this week. He's worked very hard with Shane on the race car setup. The thing that they weren't happy with was the qualifying didn't quite have the raw pace of Kostecki and they basically put the white flag up on that and concentrated totally on a race car. And that has, from today's performance, stood out as a very, very good decision. Tell and a what? great decision just to make sure that car flows as nicely as it has as the crowd erupts on the top of the hill. This is gonna shake up the points a little bit in the back end of this championship as well on the run to the Gold Coast and to Adelaide. Fans enjoying it at the top of the hill and the shadows lengthen at the back end of the great race edition for 2023. For Van Gisbergen now that margin is 21.4 seconds. He negotiates Forrest Selbo for the final time. They're loving it over the top of the hill. The passion across the fan group for Ford fans and for GM fans is extreme and one of the best crowds that we've seen here this weekend. The Camaro howls down Conrad straight for the final time. On the brakes. That gearbox has survived. The steering, whatever the little trouble was there, has survived. He's into the final corner. He's off to the USA in 2024, but not before he smashes home a hammer blow pre-departure. Shane Van Gisbergen is now a three-time winner of the great race. Richie Stanaway has never had a podium here before, and he's now a great race winner. And for the second time in three years, Brody Kostecki and David Russell get on the podium for Erebus in a beautiful drive. And Anton Di Pasquale, a well-earned third position for his first podium 
at Bathurst for the Shell V Power Racing Team in the second podium for Tony Delberto. Brody Kostecki did a 7.88 on the last lap. Just completely out of control. And his best lap in the race was a 7.6. It was only two tenths away. There goes the tyres off the back of Shane's car. Let's have a look at our race results now. Confirmation for race 24 of 28 for the 23 Ripco Supercars Championship. Shane Van Gisberg and Richie Stanaway with emphatic victory today. Just under 20 seconds over Brody Kostecki and David Russell from Anton Di Pasquale, Tony Delberto, Chaz Mostert, Lee Holdsworth, David Reynolds and Garth Tander. An extraordinary fight back. James Courtney and Zach Best, Bryce Fullwood, Dean Fiore, Will Brown, Jack Perkins also on a comeback trail there from Jack LeBrock. And James Golding, Matt Payne just outside the top 10 with Kevin Estrade, Thomas Randall, Gary Jacobson, Tim Slade and Jonathan Webb, Nick Perkat, Fabian Coulthard, Cameron Hill, Jalen Rowbotham, the brothers Davison, Will and Alex, and then Scott Pye, Warren Luff, Declan Fraser, Tyler Everingham. And these guys, unfortunately, had some pretty difficult news to have to swallow during the day for Lowndes and Goddard, for Winterbottom and Caruso, problems at the back end. For Waters and Moffat, what a shame for them, for James to make that contact with the wall up the top of the hill, really hurt the cause. And those guys have been pretty impressive here in the last couple of years. That's a bit of fill to swallow for them. Hey, here's the point situation. 131 points now, the margin between Brody and Shane. So that closed up a little today. But movement for Will Brown, who's come up a spot as a result of what happened to Brock, who's dropped down into uh, position number four. Chaz Mostert up one position into fifth and up four positions as a result of today's very strong performance. Anton Di Pasquale now up into seventh position inside that top 10. So they're clawing back some ground at the back end of the year. Teams championship wise, 149 points the gap. Coca-Cola racing by Erebus over the Red Bull Ampol racing team. And then the BJR guys in position number three, their Shell V-Power racing team in uh, position number four. A teams championship is vitally important for pit lane position and garage position going into the 2024 Ripco Supercars Championship.